these are the worms we used in yesterday's shore trip. So I don't waste anything, but you can't freeze down rag, they don't seem to freeze very well. I just kept these in the fridge overnight. And they're I well, just shows you if the fish are there they will take us. So there's nothing wrong with like where I was fishing yesterday. It's just you need the fish there to eat the bait. The same rod I was using yesterday. Just a popping rod, it's quite powerful. I've not actually had a big fish on this to have a good pull on it. But it works with this uh, braid and stuff. There's plenty good enough for fishing. Sort of it what I call inshore fishing. And at the moment I've got yesterday's ragworm on here and the Atlantic prawn on there is not getting any bites at all. It might be a bit big. I've got a little small wrasse there, it's the sort of thing I thought I'd be catching yesterday. Like that small wrasse, but not to be. Out here, it's different in the boat. Well, it's gone really heavy now, so I'm eating it. Oh, is it it's snaggy anyway, is it, Wayne? It's, it can be snaggy, yeah. It can be. But you've got to say, you've got every chance of... Um... Well, it's almost mixed mark. So it's, gone from, it's gone from bream to dogfish. <laughs> yeah. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was bream and I, it's gone very, very dogfishy now. Oh no, he's spinning. What is that? A pouting, and I've got you have a line, Wayne. Hopefully, it's just gone through the loop. The tide seems to be easing, and Wayne says they're getting a few more bites now, so no need to cast quite so far. It seems to be just dropping over. I guess this is a pouting, but it's gone light now. Oh no, it's another one of your friends here, here Wayne. Mr. Conga. <laughs> yeah. On, a, on ragworm, can you believe? What you say? See now, it's bizarre as it seems, something like that would have made my shore fishing trip yesterday. And you come out in the boat and you think, oh, they're a bit of a pest. It's strange how we, oh yes, look, he's eating the microphone. He's <laughs> just choking me on the microphone. <laughs> now I'm stuffed, oh dear, oopsie. Right, let's see if we can get him off, guys, and get him back. Small hook, thin line, never easy to get hold of. I can see the hook going. Oh no, straight off. So we just stopped on a bit of reef after trying to uh, bass mark them. About two or three pounds, but one looks like he's got better fish hooked up here. We're well, going for small. Pretty well small baits. See what there is. That one's all in there. Pulling a little bit too hard to be a dog. Feeling it's a strap eel. Yeah, it's a small one, yeah. No, that was one there, Wayne. Cut of fish, you say? Yeah, little strips of coal. That was uh, one of the good things about. There weren't too many good things about um, the lockdown, but one of them was that. Uh, the commercial guys couldn't sell their cattle abroad and normally that's what they would do and get a decent price for it as well but what it meant was they still wanted it they were still catching it and wanted to get shot of it so we filled our boots and uh, i think it was two pound a kilo and pound a pound so a great price and we um me and a few friends sort of uh, loaded up with them yeah yeah got, got a couple of hundred pound a piece yeah i thought it was strap meal these are just unbelievably they like that cuttlefish. Oh, yeah, it would do. But these are everywhere, absolutely. And they're all year round now. And I'm so normally, normally you think, what, uh, October, November, December, we used to say for eels, didn't you? Yeah, they used to basically, years ago, they come in, um, in the winter months, they come in shore. Um, and you get some nice big eels, actually, but you can't get through them. And they seem to be around all of the time. And we're on a bit of rough ground, which doesn't help. But, uh, oh, there's a bite up there. He's on that one, I figure. Oh, we'll come off when he's just right. What's that way? I'm taking that way off. He's so easily hooked. He should come off a piece of cake. God.
Oh, he made it down, that one. There's something interesting, guys. Just wound up. You see, there's a trace. He might let go any minute. That conga's not even hooked. He's not even hooked. He's just holding on to the bait there. There you are. There you are, he's gone. Yeah, I've been feeling a bit, bit, oh, let out of the way, Wayne. Yeah, I feel a bit peaky. I've been, wife's been feeding me some strange food lately, I'll tell you. Cheese and pickle sandwiches. Let's put cheese with Marmite. Oh, I don't know what it does to you. you know, I've got no idea what it does to you. Look at that. That's terrible. That's just a disease from a cheese, mustard, pickle, everything sandwich. Oh. It's going to sting in the morning, bud. Well, we just come in shore. We have a few hours here for a while. I've been here minutes and Wayne's had a bite, so it would be interesting to see what this is. Who knows what it could be? Pouting, bream, wrasse. There right, we go. Nice spiky bream. Lovely hook, look at that, beautiful. Took a liking to my bit of uh, cuttlefish. Yeah, they like that cuttlefish, don't they? Yes, yeah, lovely bait. Depends how you cut it up, obviously, you know, bigger baits for the likes of um, cod, conger, and what have you, but if you cut it into very, very fine strips, and I mean very fine, almost like slithers you can see through, um, it's a cracking bait for uh, all sorts of little fish, you know, the bream in particular like it. So what we thought was a, another bream is turning into a, another species, maybe. Yeah, no, it's, it's worm on here, so it's a wrasse. There you go. Oh, it's a nice it's one, yeah. nice ballon. Lift him in. He's quite a nice ballon wrasse, actually. Look at him. Yeah, it's a nice one, isn't it? Nice light markings here, too. Yeah, I mean, I do like the uh, the lime greens and the blues and the reds, and but there's a lot of these brown ones around. Um, but he's quite a chunky fish, him. Right. Is he still on? Yeah. We're giving bites all over now, guys. We're moving closer to shore. Wayne's getting bites, I'm going to leave the head come up there, I'll wind this way. We've had one bream, and I'm guessing this is a bream as well. Well, it's quite a nice bream. There we go. That was on the worm, and I've been trying pieces of shrimp there as well. So it's strange, we sat here for a while with nothing, and now uh, we're starting to get bites. And we're going to put him back. What would it be like with a chum bag, Wayne? Be, yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Just see if it would bring all the small fish around. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, we've got a couple of mackerel in here. They can, they're only going to rubby bucket anyway, because they're all a bit soft. But I might just um, slowly chum. Oh, you're on, Wayne. Had a good bite on this one. Right hand one. I think he's on. I think they've done me for bait. Well, it's going well, actually. Is it going well? 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 that time yeah yeah on the uh, long grabbing tentacle maybe it's just a snag oh it's juddering through something yeah oh is it yeah, yeah I can feel it ju -ju 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 the line that's really as the boat's swinging it's pulling in the snag yeah. no, it's <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's something. I just pulled, pulled him for a break and something pulled back. He's definitely in the snag, but I, I, I can feel a fish move. Oh, no, it's come off. Oh, I can see one of your small congas got old. Oh, no, it's still there. It's hit again, look. look. No, he's dropped it. It came up and dropped it again. I wonder what that was. Had him off the bottom then. I think we'll just leave that just off the bottom in case it's a something peculiar. 
I mean, I could have lost the bait, but we'll give you five minutes. Let's check this kitty. I think this is... Oh, is there something on here? Yes, bream on here. We need, we need those light spinning rods again, Wayne. Yeah, they, 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 they really give a good account of themselves. I mean, they, are, they do tend to be slightly small in, in, in here. Shark on! <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a nibble, that one. Is that on your feathers? Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> the washing line full of scad. Yeah, they'll do. <laughs> they'll do. So that's a horse mackerel. Guys, were they baited, Wayne, or those? No, they were just feathers just hanging, hanging, there. hanging about 10 foot off the bottom. We're only in uh, 30 foot of water, but um, these are obviously making very good bait, so these are coming back with us. It should be easier to get off than this, but... they got small hooks on those feathers, are not yeah, they? Yeah, I, I like these little sabiki type feathers. They're, they're really good, but the trouble with them is they... Um, small hooks, aren't they? Yeah. They engulf them a little bit. Some pools now. Pardon? Of course, they could be hitting the big piece of squid on the bottom jig. They might not necessarily be hitting the, the actual hook bait. I'm going to slack back that and let a bow develop in the line so the jig hits the seabed and the bow goes behind them, maybe. I can't get them. Well, I'm going to try something different, but I haven't got a light lit, so I'm using just a jig hook like this with a piece of cutlerfish on it. I'm going to pop it right up over the jig head there. And then they can tug away on this, plus I might get a fish on it. It acts as a weight for me because it's only shallow here. Maybe we'll pick a fish up, pretty sure we will. Pretty sure they're going to have that. Let's see what happens. You've got cattle and all yours now, ain't you? No, I've got a little bit of mackerel. Mackerel and cattle. The mackerel didn't hit straight away. Money and scab went through like that, bang bang, and that's it. You've just gone then, aren't they? Yeah, you think they'd stay under the boat with that chum? Fish here, which we're cutting up into bits and pieces. Now, if we're fishing for small fish like we are at the moment, I feel one of the best ways of doing it is literally you take you shave a little tiny segment off, and it's almost translucent, as you can see. And tough, that tough though, isn't it? Mate? Oh, still good bait, yeah, yes, yeah, still uh, it's tougher than squid. And that, as you can see, how thin that is, almost see through. It's basically what I'm looking for to put on my uh, small hooks and. That'll pick up um, black bream, gilt if they're around, pout, uh, triggers if they're around, uh, red mullet even take this. It's very chefy, Wayne. Very chefy, yeah, so I'm not <laughs> sure what I'd call these if I was cooking them. Couch take... Couch on things. <laughs> they wouldn't take long shavings. Shavings, yeah. <laughs> They wouldn't take long to cook, that's for sure. But um, 
even with my cooking. Oh, I'm, I'm best not Don't talk, go there. Go best ahead. not talk about your cooking. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so, ideal base here, tough enough. Yeah, they're, they're great. And that's what you want, little tiny slithers. I've heard people say the cut, oh, well, it's all right for conger and cod. Well, depending on how you prepare it, it's all right for a lot of species. And uh, I'm sure if I bring one of those rods in, bait up with a couple of these strips, you'll see us catch fish on it. Yeah, that boat is now next to me still. And Steve's got it, my mate's got it off of him. So he fishes it. Oh, that's right. Double it, there. Double it, yeah. I don't think your shaved, shaved cuttlefish is going to last too long, way. Well, another bream. Getting plenty of bream now. Oh, those of them. So I definitely think that works. And the way in that charming. Yeah, we said it many times before, haven't we? Um, it does. It. it why wouldn't it? It's um, scent in the water, particles, bits and pieces for them to eat. Not just for the sharks, we do it with uh, you know, with these small fish as well. And you can see on the bait table now, we're getting towards the end of the day and we've just got a lot of squidgy soft mackerel. So that head, for instance, you don't necessarily have to put that in a, in a bag or anything. You can just cut that into very small pieces, drop it over the side. And by the time it goes down and sinks, it's generally in the area where your, your bait is. So it does bring fish in. and. Uh, you know, a lot of fish respond to it. I mean, um, certainly since we've been putting particles and bits and pieces in the water, we've had more bites. It's, the, the bream have found us. Yeah, definitely, we've had more fish, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we have. So, uh, yeah, absolutely it works. That's a better fish, Wayne. Yeah, it's nice, nice bream, then. Um, he took a... Combo bait. Couple of little dinky ragworm we had left and a little strip of that, as you can see, there's that little translucent bit of coal. And that was very much to his liking, and he just yeah. spiked me, so he can go back anyway. Um, fabulously tough little fish, and oh, he's he, gone. He did not mess about. So that literally was the last of those little dinky Worms. ragworm you had. Well, at least they caught fish, way. Yeah, they will. Even more, when more than I caught off the beach with them yesterday. <laughs> well, it is. Um, it tends to be. Let's face it. It tends to be. Uh, uh, it's going to be better in the boat. Always, it tends isn't it? To be, let's face it. Yeah. Bring look, another one. It'll do. A bit smaller than I thought. I thought it was a little bit better than that, the way he bent that rod over, but. So we had a few uh, few max now, we? Yeah, he's just come off, but uh, what a rarity they are. But um, that is a valuable little fish at the moment. Nice um, to see him though. Nice to see him. Yeah, I, I, listen, I don't I'm not a uh, global warmer warming uh, denier. But what I would say is, why are there still mackerel around then? Are these, do these, are these, is this a mackerel that doesn't mind the warmer temperature? Because there are still mackerel around, they're just few and far between. There you go, there's a, there's a, there's a string for there. There's some nice ones here, Wayne. Get in. There we go. Happy days. Well, I'm more than taken. That's what you say when they've got to go on the bucket list. <laughs> 40 fish fellas, that's exactly where they're going, but um. Yeah, but I mean, small feathers better you find, mate. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'll find these. Uh, I'll, I'll put a little bit of bait on them, as you can see, a little sliver of. Uh, but they don't need it. Once once they're around and they find it, you're on it. Getting cut. I think I lost the rest of them. But some took too long. Oh, now green. black greens come off the bottom. Took more feathers. How's that? And that was halfway up. So, just goes to show. Funny enough, I will say this. Back in when I was bream fishing in April, I put a, I was in 40 feet of water and I put a little sliver of squid on and I floated it out and it was about a foot under the surface in 40 feet of water. I was open for a garfish. And I had a really good screaming take and I thought, oh, that's such a good gar. And it was a strap eel. Really? So, so it's come... Either it's swimming in the surface, but what I think more likely is that it swam 40 feet up to take a little slither of squid off a floated rig. So you can't even get away from the congas if you uh, float away out. <laughs> in the top. Oh, there's another one. Not sure if this one's mackerel or oh, it's your bait. It'd be another bream. Yeah. Yeah, another bream. Yeah. Quite a nice one again. It's actually all right, isn't it, for yeah. I think where we are inshore, and that's basically taking exactly what we were talking about earlier 
He took um, them little slithers. Shaving, a shaving. Shavings of uh, cuttlefish, perfect. Wow, double shot pouting. One assumes that's what the conger are after as well, guys. Just a couple of pouting. 